Okay, a few things. A collective breath. Whew. We made it to Sunday. It's always a good feeling. I do want to just take a moment. To, what Your Sunday coordinators are so phenomenal. They work tirelessly to help you have a beautiful Sunday service. So let's, Bob, Jackson, Karen, John, and all, Nancy, everybody behind the scenes, your board. I'm so grateful. And I think sometimes, you know, as volunteers, uh, we had that beautiful volunteer dinner. And, uh, we, you know, this just doesn't happen by magic. I am learning it takes a lot of people to do a lot of things, and I can't do it alone. So I really am deeply grateful for you, the community, and for all of the volunteers and all of the staff. I've been having beautiful conversations with everybody, getting to know them, and uh, things are unfolding. And, you know, with new minister, new spiritual director, comes new things. So we just ask for your patience while we find the perfect container for spirit to reveal itself to you in the coming months. But um, right now we're just going to celebrate Sunday. We're going to celebrate um, the holidays are coming. Jackson talked about Juliet. We haven't announced it yet, but since we started talking about it, we'll, there will be a flyer, more to come. But on December 16th, we're going to have a holiday musical festival ga gala, and uh, oh, we'll have a visitor that wears a red suit for the kiddos. And um, we're going to have uh, cookies and coffee. It's going to be from 2 to 4.30. And so there's more. I'm spilling the beans way before I should. But I'm very excited about it. And we're going to have cookie. You know, uh, I love sugar cookies and decorating. And so I'm saying it's for the kids, but it's really for me because I like to eat them. Um, but I just, you know, with me being new here, the holidays came so quickly. And and all of the things that you're used to are going to be in place. Nothing is changing. Um, but I wanted to, you know, do something special for you from me. And um, Juliet so lovingly offered her um, time to do that for us. And, and uh, again, all of this will be announced. But since I'm talking about it, you know, all the proceeds, we're going we're gonna, to uh, tithe back to a community um, that represents children for the holidays, for anything that we collect for that. So more to come. OK. Um, and our leadership had a great meeting yesterday. We talked about this building and how it is the container for the collective soul of our community. And nobody, you know, nobody has ownership over the building. It's in itself its own entity. And, it's, it, it, and we, as we come together, and uh, manifest uh, our greatest desires, and we come here to study, and we bring our uh, top-level energy. It moves out and flows over. And so how do we begin to take care of our building and breathe a soul into it so that we become that beloved community that Reverend Kath talked so much about? It was a phenomenal meeting. So more to come on that, too. But I just want you to know that your leadership is really working hard in the background to bring you the best and uh, the best and highest uh, every Sunday. And uh, we look forward to doing that. Um, so happy Sacred Sunday. And today the talk title is uh, The Mundane Sigh. I don't know that I like that type. I don't know that that's my favorite talk title, but um, they did create it at CSL. I am honoring their wisdom. So I'm changing a little bit. <laughs> um, but that's OK. But first, I have a joke. All right, so why did the minister bring a ladder to the center on Sacred Sunday? Why? Yeah, why? Because she's taking her congregation to new heights. <laughs> so speaking of a ladder, my teacher, Rebe, beloved soul Rebe, who's gone to the greater yet beyond, he used to say that, you know, that no one is better than anyone else. We, we elevate our consciousness, and sometimes with a higher consciousness, we climb the ladder, and we reach back, and we pull people up. And that's what I believe Science of Mind is about, is if you do the work, if you are inspired to do the work, then uh, your consciousness expands. And I, I remember taking the class by Ernest Holmes and um, Judy, again, a beloved that has gone on, but was a great teacher for that class, the study of Ernest Holmes. And I didn't really know what consciousness was. And so the whole class, every Tuesday I'd go and I'd go, but what is consciousness? <laughs> And she goes, oh, don't worry about it. You'll figure it out. And I go, but I really want to know what it is. And she goes, well, we're talking about Ernest Holmes. And if you would just read the book, Tracy. 
If you just read the book and don't read it with your mind, read it with your soul, meaning just read it not to understand it. And then your soul will bring to you what you need and then your consciousness will expand. And uh, she goes, so there's a clue for you. 10 more weeks, you should have the answer by the end. <laughs> um, so this is kind of what I think about embracing the mundane and the sacred. The mundane aspects of our daily life includes routine, responsibilities, everyday tasks. Jackson was talking a little bit about that. And, um, and we all have to do it, don't we? And sometimes it's like, ugh, right? So this is the mundane. And the, the sacred, on the other hand, encompasses moments of inspiration, beauty, and transcendence. And it is designed to deepen our spiritual journey. So we learn to recognize and appreciate the s sacred in the seemingly mundane right? We are all on this planet together. Newsflash. We're all here together. We all got here the same way, unless, you know, you have a different way that you got here than I did. I'd really be interested to hear that story. <laughs> but, um, but assuming that we all got here the same way, and we all are exiting the same way, and we're all traversing the same things, that this is where compassion, this is where the sacredness of life truly arises, that we are all dealt cards. And sometimes we have no control over what those cards are that we're dealt. But there is one thing for sure, no matter what cards that you are dealt, the seed of light, of love, of God, of universe, whatever it is that you call it, is in each one of us. And we bring that to our mundane, right? I heard Mother Mira say once, uh, go to work and sit down and do it as God. And I was like, oh, my mind got a hold of that. <laughs> so your mind, when it gets a hold of a spiritual teaching, tries to do. It's busy doing. And that's okay in the beginning because this is what starts us on a path to the spiritual awakening, which is really what we're all about. We want a spiritual awakening, a, transcend a transcendence, a liberation to live in the mundane and be in the sacred. So you've heard chop wood, carry water. So my teacher says to me, uh, before enlightenment and after enlightenment, you're doing the same thing. But before you're doing it with your mind, after you're doing it as God or the universe or again, whatever word that works for you. And so this is my thing about the mundane, that we, we have to slow down to even recognize that we're in it, right? Sometimes we've met all those people. I've been there. Uh, you know, in the four quadrants, it's uh, to me, the victimization that we, this happens in the mundane a lot. It keeps us stuck in our everyday life. And we fight for those limitations. Man, we want, we, I was talking to my friend yesterday and she was going through something and uh, she had manifested this really beautiful uh, job and money. And, and, I, and I was talking to her a couple months ago before I grew before I knew, because <laughs> we all do the best we can when we have it, right? We all do the best we can when we have it. And, um, and she was like, oh, there, you know, I, this is more than I thought was going to happen. And I'm like, what are you talking about? You manifested. This is yours. And she was like, yeah, but I wanted 20, and they gave me 30 hours. And, and you know, I wanted Friday off, and they're giving me Monday off too. And I'm like, yeah, what's wrong? And she's like, I just don't know. And I'm like, I got to go shopping because I can't have this conversation with you right now. Like, are you really kidding me? You're mad because you manifested your, your great power? And what I failed to recognize is that she manifested it but wasn't quite steadied in her readiness to accept all the good that came her way, right? That it was surprised her. That when I came, we did a workshop and, you know, we did those beautiful books about manifesting and she worked that book, okay? I wrote it, she worked it. And her, a lot of her dreams started coming true and it frightened her. So when we're living our life in the mundane, going about our business, um, and then we go to the center, we take a class, we have spiritual business, and we start to take off those heavy things. We, we take off shame, we take off blame, we take off guilt, and the magnificence and the radiance of spirit that you truly are is starting to shine through. It can take one moment in the mundane to collapse that for a quick minute until somebody from your group, your holy group, that 
accountability group that comes back and reminds you. And sometimes that can be, have you ever reminded anybody of their light? Sometimes it sounds like this. Oh my God, thank you so much. Sharon, uh, I'm sorry, Karen said to me today, your, your light is shining or something like this. And I was like, oh, thank you. But if you're talking to somebody that doesn't want to hear it, they're like, yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> I know. And I go, no, but really, like, listen. No, I know. And the, the, sometimes people want to stay in the mundane. And sometimes people don't realize that as you traverse the mundane, that, you, that they, are beg- they, they go like this. They go hand in hand. We are all on this planet. We are all human beings. We've all traversed trauma. We've all traversed certain circumstances. And we can. And some of them are so painful. I've had those myself. Some of them we don't even want to whisper or mention, but the healing starts within. And when we start that healing, we bring the sacred to our everyday life because we don't get to escape being human beings. We don't really get to escape going to work. We get to bring a positive mental attitude to the work that we're at. So when I heard Mother Mira say, you know, do it as God does it, and I'm like, I have I'm going to be the best employee. My boss is going to like me so much, and I'm never going to give her another hard time, and I'm going to sit at my computer like God. What would God do? <gasps> Hello, thank you. My name is Tracy, calling from USA. How can I help you today? Oh, yes. And so I had to pretend, right, because the mind just wants to take things and run away with them, but the soul is just still. The soul is sacred. It's just still. It grows within you. And so we, we talked a lot about in our leadership meeting about being mindful and present and building a community and how um, we have to leave sometimes the mundane, even though there's work to do, and rely on spirit and principle. So we talked about visioning. We talked about seeing things before they happen, right? So at my old center, I really wanted us to have new carpet. And I would walk into that center and I would look at the carpet and I'm like, oh, this carpet. When are we going to get? I'd go to the board meeting and go, when are we getting new carpet? And my, my minister said to me, when you see it. <laughs> Which reminds me of that Ernest Holmes story where they're walking along. And I don't know if you've ever heard it. And uh, he was walking with a friend and there was a yard and it was disheveled. And, you know, and the guy was like, oh, this yard's an eyesore. And Ernest Holmes would be like, no. And every day he would walk by and he would vision the yard as he wanted it. And one day when they arrived at this uh, yard, it was glorious. And so our life, our mundane life, is the life that we project from our thinking. You need to know what you're thinking and how you can start to recognize that is in the stillness. And sometimes those thoughts scare us, right? So we, we start to recognize in the mundane that thoughts are coming and going and they're not really us. So once we recognize that thoughts aren't really us, oh, it's such a relief. It's hard to believe that thoughts aren't really us. But once we recognize that, then we start to ask the question, who am I? Who do I bring to my everyday life? Who am I when, I'm, when, when we're at McDonald's and the person can't get the order right? Who am I when I'm at work and my boss needs support and, and uh, you know I'm being challenging? Who am I when I can't realize that the thing that irritates me in the mundane life I've either been or have grown from? I've either been or I've grown from. And when we've grown from, sometimes the mind can come along, and my teacher used to call it spiritual piety. (laughs) And this is a process that we all go through. We become very spiritual, and we can use this as an excuse uh, in our mundane life to be better than everybody else. I know that's not you. It must must have just been me. Um, but, But what happens is we have humbling experiences that bring us back down to earth, and we learn to be in the mundane life And we learn that we don't, or it doesn't require anything from you or your mind. It only requires your spirit. And that we start to let go and we get to ask the question, who am I and what do I want? And we get to plant that seed and as it shows up, our faith is built. So that is one thing my friend told me, that her faith was building and I could see it for her, but she could not. And it really, it kind of caused a little rift in our uh, relationship. And it's really hard. I mean, I hold on to my friends tight, like, oh, you can't leave me. And, uh, and she, you know, so we, we kind of had to have this separation for a little bit. And we came together after I met with my teacher. And we talked about 
it's not your fault. He's like, I was, I'm sure I shared something with him that I was in pain over. And I was sharing with him that I've had my mother at my house for a month. And if you've stayed with your mother, I love her. Um, <laughs> but I thought I was like my father. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm like my mother. And, um, and it was, <laughs> it's been very beautiful. But each of those things come up and I'm like, oh. And so we had trick or treat, and my mom sits, and we take the baby, and he's dressed up as Olaf. He was so cute, and we we walk, and I'm I'm thinking to Bill, I go, I should get back to my mom. You know, all the kids are coming, the teenagers, and here's my mom. We get back, she's sitting in the chair, and uh, she's <laughs> the kids come up, teenagers, young ones, and she's like, you got to say it if you want some candy. And I was like, Mom, what are you doing? And she's like, if you want some candy, you got to say it. Trick or treat, smell my feet, give me something good to eat. And I'm like, Mom, they don't do that anymore. <laughs> and she's like, What? You know, my mom's from Newfoundland. Get out of here. Now what? You know, and I'm like, I'm like, Mom, they just want their candy. Just give them their candy and let them leave. You're embarrassing me. And she was like, I was doing perfectly fine until you came along and decided that you needed to own the show. <laughs> Yeah, and I was like, I was like, oh. And so later on, I was like, okay, fine, I'm leaving you alone. And then this little girl comes up, and she has a Cinderella costume, and they have that little plastic brooch. And my mom goes, isn't that a pretty brooch? I go, don't touch her. You're not allowed to touch them. You know, my mom was like, my mom was like, are you a minister? Are you like, are you okay? And so, you know, this this is our mundane life, right? A lot of stuff happens. We have trick or treat. We have Christmas. We spend time with family. You start to see who you are. So you see where I'm going with this. When I sat down to talk to my teacher Tom, I had a lot to talk about. And he goes, Tracy, it's not your fault. It's not her fault. It's not anybody's fault. We are who we are. We're all dealt cards. We all live from those cards. And until we transcend the cards, this is where compassion rises. That we don't give people a break, and especially in our philosophy. Um, sometimes people think that we can use it to let people off the hook, but really, that's our mind saying, I don't want to be a doormat, right? Because we're all doing the best that we can when we're doing it. And if somebody gently enough comes along that has owned their stuff and recognizes that they've been through what they've been through, then they offer compassion, not a fix. This is what happens in the mundane life when you invite in the sacredness of who you are into your relationships. So we're coming from Halloween and we're sitting down and I take a breath. I'm like, I need to go meditate. It's been a long day. And, um, and I don't know what happened. And my mom, Bill comes in and Bill's like, how is it? Everything. And she's like, your wife <laughs> treats me like a little girl. <laughs> and I was like, oh, well, that's how you treated me when I was a little girl, so now we're even. Um, and so Bill goes, yeah, welcome to the club, you know. So, so we all learn about ourselves from the people that we love, and we can take that feedback and be reactive, or we can take it and go, oh, where do I still need to heal? So when I was sitting down with my friend, and she was telling me, my immediate urge was to tell her she was wrong. And to go, no, 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 you don't know. Like, no, mm -mm. And so then this uh, inspiration popped into my head, and it said, shut up. <laughs> and let her talk. And so I let her talk, and the tears flowed, and then the compassion came up, and the sacredness came to her and mine mundane moment, that moment between friends where you're trying to heal something, where you're trying to give each other permission to be who you are. It was a mindfulness moment. And so I, coming into a new community and, and my mind likes to see everything that Tracy wants. <laughs> and so, you know, through the development of these relationships, realizing that God has placed me here in the most beautiful community, full of love, and that uh, Reverend Katz said, um, you're there by way of consciousness. So I've been taking this into my meditation into an understanding that I left one job in the mundane world, and I came to another job in the mundane world, and you still have to bring your sacredness to it. And it sounds like it's two, but it's not, it's one. God is the wholeness of who we are, and we are expressing that through our humanness, through our stories, our beliefs. So here, in Science of Mind, we take you from believing 
to direct experience of knowing who you are. So that when you meet that person, you can truly pause. Because in the mundane, there is no pause. There's mind going right into reaction, right into defense, right into that. And you can't get anywhere with that in your mundane life. That that's what we have different or we express itly different than the other faiths, I feel, because we are taking ownership of who we are, and we truly want to be liberated from those stories, and we don't want to leave them behind or forget them. We want to understand that there are other people who will walk through this door that are new, we will meet them at the grocery store, and they will still be in somewhat in the mundane, uh, maybe, it, maybe inviting the sacred in, but but they don't quite know how to do it. And then we will be able to meet them with a smile and a sense of compassion and an understanding and say, I know where you can get that. Um, but you will become so magnetic and, and magnetic and radiant that people will ask you. That is my vision for our community, is that we bring the mundane, the everyday life that we all live, the, all the cards that we've dealt, and that we recognize in each person that I've been that, I've been there. Compassion will arise, and we will build a consciousness, a beloved soul consciousness in this community that when people drive by, uh, they will feel it. I have invited people into the question, what do you want to feel like when you walk into our center? And I personally want to feel the sacredness in the middle of the mundane and, 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 and realize the mundane is just our everyday life. I, I need a job, I got bills to pay, and uh, so I'm, I think all of you do too, or you're retired and enjoying it, but you still have to manage your retirement, and, and, uh, and we want to be here to remind you of your truth. And so God is one. The universe is one, and we are expressing it as people. But what if we dropped the story, stepped into our sacredness, doing it as Tracy? But, you know, it's said, uh, the, the quote, right? Live in the world, but not of it. This is what it means, is that to become fully liberated from your stories, you still, you, you still have to, to move and be in, in the world. My teacher is a doctor in England, and he still goes to work, and he's fully liberated, and, and I don't know how he does it. I mean, he does satsang twice a week, he has clients, he is a doctor, but he still chops woods and carries water. He has a family, right? So this is what the mundane and the sacred is, is realizing and giving yourself a break. It's not your fault. Stop blaming yourself for your past. Stop blaming yourself for the things that your mom said. Stop blaming yourself for the things that your teacher said, your best friend said, the man down the street when you're driving by and you cut him off and he did something not so nice. And, you know, just, just, just stop blaming yourself and other people and just stop for a moment and say, Namaskaram, I see you. The God in me sees the God in you, the thing that is the same. And if you miss the mark, don't worry about it. You'll get another chance. <laughs> My teacher always used to say, because I always used to worry about what people thought about me, and sometimes I still do. And I would say, but I really want to go apologize. And he would say, stop apologizing and ask for forgiveness. And once you do, let it go. And I go, but what if they don't let it go? And he goes, that's their problem right? You showed up as your authentic self. And if it's genuine, they will hear it. It might not mend the relationship. They might not want to be around you, but your responsibility to your sacredness is done. Own your stuff, right? Own your stuff. And then be gentle with yourself. I have made a lot of mistakes, a lot of mistakes. Um, and I, when I, you know, every now and then you're driving along when the car's quiet and your mind starts reminding you of all the mistakes you made. And you're like, ooh, yeah, that one, I remember that one. And then I, I now have this moment where I go, but it's okay. Because we're all here as a collective doing the same thing, moving in the same way. So mindfulness, mindfulness and presence, practicing mindfulness in the everyday life and our daily activities, simple actions of cooking, gardening, spending time with loved ones, even mothers, um, you begin to uncover the sacred in your ordinary. You begin to learn your orientation towards life and you begin to appreciate it. 
You don't, you don't hide it anymore. You don't sign up for things that you don't want to do in the mundane. You ask yourself, what do I want to do? And then you go do that and you find what you're good at. And then God shines through and the blessings come. And you're like, whoa, how did I get here? You got here because you stopped lying to yourself. You stopped doing things because you thought other people, it would make other people happy. And you live in your presence. And then the mindfulness marries the mundane and the sacred. And you express as you were supposed to through this body that God placed you here. You are not a mistake. You are not broken. There is nothing wrong with you, so get to living. That is my demand. Right? It is who we are, and it is our right. And so when we're building this community, as individuals, as a community, we get to see the sacred and the mundane. A shared sense of purpose is what we're breeding. A shared sense of purpose. We are going to encourage this community to share their insights, experience, and practices, and find sacred in the everyday life of running a center. I like to call it a church, but that's okay. You can call it a center. A church is a gathering of ecclesiastical people, by the way, to honor the one. I had to look that up because I'm often challenged with the words that I am use. use. <laughs> Um, and so we, we want that. And by coming together with a, sheer, a shared spiritual practice, a deeper sense of belonging and unity, we can foster the community, the container that spirit wishes to express in, in a dynamic and fun-loving way. That's what you bring. That's what I'm excited about. That is what I am up here jumping up and down. And if I didn't have be bad knees, I'd do a cartwheel. Um, <laughs> But we're going to incorporate the sacred into our mundane life. So no more mundane sigh. It's, oh, I see the mundane. I'm unhappy with what I'm doing. God, what do you want me to do? How can I express my truth? What do I need to do? Stop living the lie. Ask the question, what do I want? When my teacher, Tom, he would ask me that every Wednesday. And I would go, I don't know. What is your desire? I don't know. Oh, well, I want to be a minister, but what if it goes bad and then I, and I mess up and I don't do a great job and everybody hates me? And he's like, um. <laughs> and he goes, what do you want? And I said, I want to be a minister. And he goes, then go do it. So I did it. <laughs> right? And, and, it, and, it, and, it, and it's scary, and it's fun, and it's invigorating, and, and, and hard, and challenging, but I still feel a sense of purpose, and can you tell? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I want to I wanna bring that to you. I want you to find your own sacredness in your mundane, so that every time I see you, you, if you're sad, I can say, oh, I understand. I've been there. Shall I sit with you instead of trying to fix with you? So I'm going to end with a story about my mom, because um, <laughs> my mom was talking to her friend, and and uh, and and her friend was in a lot of pain, and my mom's like, "Oh, but it's okay." She was fixing, and I was like, "Listen, listen, listen." And she's like looking at him. I'm like, "Just listen to her. She wants you to listen to her." And my mom, and I go, "Oh." <laughs> oh. And so I called my friend and I go, oh, <laughs> I get it. You wanted me to listen. And she goes, yes. And I go, she goes, Tracy, I just needed you to support me in my everyday life. That scares me. And so my mom says, um, my, I don't know, Bill came in and we're trying to get pizza and the baby. You know how hectic the mundane life can be with responsibilities and all. And I said to my mom, I turn around and I go, what? And she goes, what did I do now? And I go, oh, 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 I recognize that. That happened to me when I was little, and now I'm doing it, and how do I do it to others, you know, and that whole thing goes out. And so what I'm saying is, like, if we just really pay attention to our lives, everything that we need to heal is in front of us. Everything that you need is a seed planted within you. Everything that you want is there for you to have. In closing, I saw this mantra, um, on the way up. So I, I drove myself to Prescott. For those of you who don't know, I'm a big scaredy cat. My husband did sit in the passenger seat, though. I haven't quite got to doing it on my own yet. But uh, I have a great desire. So I saw this mantra that said uh, on Instagram, of all places, you know, that's where you get all your spiritual news on Instagram. Because <laughs> it's on the internet. It's true. Um, so the guy said, money is the easy. Your mantra today is money is the easiest darn thing to make. And Say it every day in the window. Money is the easiest darn thing to make, right? And I thought, well, if that works for money, it'll work for driving. So I get in the car. I do an invocation. I'm in my mundane life. I'm scared. And I go, driving to Prescott is the easiest thing there is to do. 
<laughs> and my husband, I do an invocation, and my husband's like, just turn the car on. <laughs> it's a start. Um, so we all have these stories. We all have this stuff. And I think I've kind of seeded that in consciousness that your mundane is okay, and whatever it is, it will pass. And we bring a little mindfulness, a little spiritual community, and we're about to grow and blossom and, and be our best selves. And when we're not... I promise I will recognize in myself where and when I have been that, and I will see your light, and I will hold it for you until you can hold it for yourself. I love you deeply, and I am so grateful to be here. And uh, the comedy show continues for the next three weeks. Um, <laughs> but so loving, so loving, so loving. Namaskaram, namaste. You're amazing, and thank you.